So Steve Cook just caused some Johnny drama by releasing a blood flow restriction video. I'm going to science the s*** out of this one. Don't be jealous that I've been chatting online with babes all day. And so if you don't know Steve Cook, he's perhaps the most famous fitness model in the world. He got his big break by winning one of the original bodybuilding.com fitness model searches. Interesting fact. It was down to Steve and myself for first place, but the judges gave him the nod due to a follicle count. I'm still appealing the decision. And so as much as I would love to make fun of his video and project blood flow restriction as bro science, it isn't. It actually isn't. And trust me, I would be the first one to make silly jokes with sound effects if in fact this was complete nonsense. But there's a lot of validity behind blood flow restriction training. However, blood flow restriction training is not better than traditional forms of training. And in addition, it should not replace adding more weight onto the bar for many people. And there are some small problems with how Steve communicates the information, but to be fair to him, it was just a three minute video. BFR is applicable to, to the limbs, to, to isolation movements such as the bicep curl. And the strap is attached above the muscle and, and we would refer to that as a proximal a position above the muscle. Now, why is that? Because BFR training involves allowing blood to the working muscle, but then restricting blood flowing back from the working muscle to the heart. And this creates an environment in the muscle which potentially has a hypertrophic response. And so Steve Cook fanboys relax. I did have some jokes about cutting off blood flow to his brain, etc. I don't need to use them because he wasn't misleading people with his information. And importantly, he never says it is optimal or better than other training methods. In fact, he clearly states that this is a tool and he uses the word tool, which is fantastic, that, that he uses occasionally within his training. We like to train biceps and triceps, doing some blood flow restriction. We don't do it all the time, but it's a great tool. And that's perfectly put. And so all the attacks on him for, oh, this is bro science, this is not better than heavy lifting. He never said it was better than heavy lifting. You can't misrepresent people's words. He was very clear that this is one tool you may use, and he's correct. And so very simply put, blood flow restriction has the potential to increase muscle hypertrophy using a lighter load compared to a heavier load. BFR allows one to undergo similar metabolic stress to limb skeletal muscle with lower mechanical loading intensities compared to higher mechanical loading intensities without BFR, i.e. IE, it replicates the stimulus of a heavier load using a lighter load. But again, that does not mean that you should replace increasing the weight on the bar or replace traditional methods. I have to be very clear about that. And so anybody that tells you the blood flow restriction is optimal or better than other forms of training is straight out lying to you. It is just another tool that you can use in your muscle building arsenal. And there are many issues with blood flow restriction training. I'm just going to call it BFR. And the problems are that there's research into specific aspects and applications of BFR training. However, these terrible people in social media just group together research and project them to the masses without being specific about the goals of BFR and the goals of your training and therefore applicability. And I'll get into that. And so you absolutely do not have to use BFR training to grow muscle. However, for some people, and I'll explain who they may be, it is a useful tool you can use. And, and it's also important to relate BFR training to the limbs of the body. It is applicable to your arms and your legs and training isolated movements. It is not applicable to compound movements. As, as in essence, it would be almost impossible to restrict blood flow in major compound movements when there are so many muscles and joints active. And so this is why you'll see it used with the bicep curl and also the leg extension, uh, leg machine, isolated single joint movement type exercises. And so that's very important to understand too. And so everything seems quite balanced, you know, a bit of common sense going quite well this video. Enter Vince Dry Muscle with how to add one inch to your arms in 10 minutes. Guaranteed. 10 minutes to bigger arms. Very seriously, there's no more jokes needed about Vince or the Vinces. People are tired of this type of fitness hype and fitness disinformation. And channels such as mine are growing because people want the truth. They want honesty and transparency. They want to understand the concepts and understand that they need to apply them to themselves without these kind of nonsense, add an inch to your arms in 10 minutes using BFR. And in the words of Mr. McGregor, 
I'm not here to take part. I'm here to take over. Oh. However, there are some small issues in this video. He does reference lactic acid as creating a burning sensation. Completely incorrect, and I've made a video explaining that. And then if you look at the specific exercise protocol he uses, it's 15 repetitions with 10 seconds rest, 10 repetitions with 10 seconds rest, 10 repetitions, 10 seconds rest, 10 repetitions with 10 seconds rest. That's 45 repetitions with 40 seconds rest interspersed. Now, even if you were not using those bands, you're gonna feel pretty fatigued on the muscle. And so again, you can kind of understand how BFR and the example he uses is perhaps not specifically important because his rep ranges and his very short rest time, he's using a very short rest time as a, as a form of progressive overload and challenging the muscle. And so he could just use that without the BFR bands. And so that is something important to think about. And that kind of does slightly diminish the fact that he talks about the pump and then the sensation. And if you don't know what the pump is, here's Arnold. Blood is rushing into your muscles, and that's what we call the pump. Your muscles get a really tight feeling. And on Instagram, it is fair to say that Steve got a bit annoyed with people. Steve, if you want to understand the art of the comeback, I'm your man. And so we need to get into the specific reasons why BFR creates this hypertrophic response. Now, first, we need to say that there's more work needed. It is fair to say that the range of reasons that we understand, we don't really know the sort of importance, the hierarchy or the combination of them. There's still a few ifs and buts knocking around. However, there's a few issues. By restricting blood flow, you create this hypoxic environment around the working muscle. And that means a lack of oxygen. And what that does is it, is it creates uh, metabolic byproducts such as lactate, and it creates it helps to create this metabolic stress. Metabolic stress is one factor which is fairly well established as something which, uh, as a factor which relates to muscle growth. And so it does create this hypoxic condition whereby you have the potential to increase metabolic stress, a key driver for muscle growth. In addition, there is work to suggest that it sort of fatigues type one muscle fibers, allowing you to then focus on type two fibers within the exercise. And that's really kind of interesting. Type two muscle fibers, the more powerful, uh, faster to get tired muscle fibers are built for muscle hypertrophy. They're built to grow larger. So if you can actually access them using this lighter load with BFR, now normally a lighter load would not be applicable to type two fibers, but if this BF BFR method allows that, that could, you could see how that could be of benefit to people who are unable perhaps to use a heavier load. And then in addition, due to the nature of this blood flow restriction, we have this sort of fluid buildup. It can actually have applications because cellular swelling may actually have an impact on muscle hypertrophy. Now there is more work to be done on cellular swelling and its direct and direct causation with muscle growth. However, there are, are ideas to suggest that it may have some impact on muscle growth. And therefore, in conclusion, we can say that BFR sort of induces this anabolic response and anabolic environment, which may lead to muscle growth. And so if you were to create a hierarchy of importance within your training, in terms of intensity, in terms of forms of challenging the muscle, progressive overload, for example, all the tools you can use, decreasing your rest times, the tempo of your lifting, using drop sets, supersets, uh, pyramid training, increasing the weight, increasing the weight, increasing repetitions. There are so many different ways you can challenge the muscle. BFR training would perhaps be quite low down in your hierarchy. And certainly for me, it's not something I use. It's not something that I specifically feel inclined to use as I'm very happy with the more traditional methods of, of creating intensity and overload in my training. And we have to be clear that this video, I'm, I'm talking about muscle growth. There are applications of BFR to strength. However, Steve Cook's video, and this is one issue I had, he wasn't specifically clear that this is for muscle growth because he did mention strength gains as well. And that is valid in some research into BFR. However, if you look at his training protocol, which was cable bicep curls, where he was essentially doing 45 repetitions with only 40 seconds intervals, rests in between those, those repetitions, that is not, that is not a protocol 
called for strength training. And so his video, to be very clear, is for muscle building applications. And it is fair to say that you're going to look like a dodo if you do it in the gym. And you're going to have to accept some criticism for that. And perhaps one reason that I don't necessarily want to use it is because it's perhaps due to my appearance disadvantage and my effeminate British accent. Perhaps I don't need to look like more of a dodo in the gym and put bands around the old guns. And so common sense and correct application and context is needed with BFR. I'm going to give it all, all to you in this video and safety is important. Now, if we look at systematic review into BFR, it is not inherently unsafe for you to use BFR training. However, of course, there is risk to it. This is why I would never make a BFR tutorial on YouTube. You have to be really careful when you do that. If you're someone that's interested in using this tool, absolutely, you should consider training with someone face to face in the gym who's experienced with this protocol who can safely lead you through it because you do not want to cut off your blood flow you want to restrict it for people who are taking that from youtube and applying it in the gym you can obviously see how that could be a problem. And so let's give some context. And, and here's the first problem with BFR and its research. People like to talk about science shows, research shows. Now, it is fair to say there is a good amount of research into BFR training. And in research related to BFR, the protocol used for blood flow restriction is 20 to 30% of your one repetition max for a specific exercise. However, we need to separate what the research is. We have research into more sort of recreational muscle growth. Then we have research into muscle growth but the context was in a rehabilitation setting. People recovering from injuries who did have a positive experience with BFR. And so we have to understand that, that that's slightly different because these are what would be known as vulnerable muscles recovering from injury. And then we do have a very small amount of information relating to performance with BFR training. And in research, BFR participants are compared to higher load protocols and lower load protocols. And so an example of the, the research there is into BFR, we have meta-analysis from Wilson et al. 2016, meta-analysis being s some of the highest level of evidence that we can have for a topic. Now, the benefit for people who are recovering from injury in BFR is that you are able to increase metabolic stress, which is a driver of muscle hypertrophy, muscle growth, without having to increase the mechanical stress, the mechanical load, i.e. people can, these people, these special populations recovering from injury can, can increase muscle mass using BFR without having to use a heavy load. BFR, could be highly applicable and highly useful for people recovering from injury. Now, we do have some limited research into larger muscle groups, such as Yitsuda et al. 2011, who did look at the pec major using the, the bench press, and they did not have positive results. And so whilst much research into BFR is into muscle hypertrophy, we do have some emerging research in perform into performance, such as Taylor et al. 2016, where a 4.5% increase in VO2 max was shown with the BFR participants. And also Mitchell et al. 2018 conducted a study, and part of these studies were comparing sprint intervals with, with using BFR post-exercise almost as a, for, as a form of recovery and seeing how it impacted. Now, the actual results of, of these studies are not overly convincing or can be really applied today. There is far more work needed into BFR and athletic performance. Or so And so again, don't get confused between goals and between research into specific goals and populations. And so here's a key point. If you're a beginner, you don't need to go anywhere near these bands. This is not something you need to do or think about at all. And much of Steve's Cook and, and many people in Steve Cook's audience will be beginners. You, you need to focus on more basic forms of progressive overload. For beginners, that's going to be increasing the weight. And you also need to focus on the competency and exercise execution of your lifts. Now, for more intermediate lifters and beyond, you can absolutely start to think about BFR, perhaps if it excites you, if it's something you think may be beneficial, but you want to do it on your arm arm exercises and your isolation leg exercises, not on your major compound lifts, of course. And so because because intermediate lifters and beyond, you need to be more creative with your progressive overload. You can't just increase the load on the bar indefinitely forever. Think how much weight would be on a bar. So absolutely, if you are an intermediate lifter beyond and this excites you and you think it's interesting and you, ha and you have access to these bands and you don't mind looking like a dodo in the gym, then you can absolutely incorporate this. And so here's some more people who may use BFR training. What about if you're someone who's traveling and on the road and you have these straps? 
You may not have access to heavier weights in the gym that you can, tr- the gyms you train at on the road in hotels, for example. And therefore, BFL bands may be may be a good option for you because again, they allow you to create muscle hypertrophy using a lighter load and the BFR bands in relation to a heavier load. And so I'm James Linker. This is the Shredded Sports Science. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon.